So what we've seen in the previous ones concerning determining our rotational inertia, in this example, for, exa for example, we saw that the, these little segments, these mass segments <coughs> right around the object were all situated at, a, at, the, at the same radius. So we could take that radius outside of the integral and we could sum up all the dm's, okay? That dm plus that dm, etc., etc., and we got the result. But um, there are examples, like in this example here, which we'll get to in a second, where your dm's, your, your mass segments or your iner inertia segments, are not distributed all at, this, um, at the same radius from the center of rotation. Uh, the axis of rotation. So for example, if there's your axis of rotation, you've got this rod, and you take a, a segment dm, right, which is an infinitesimal uh, inertial, inertial segment, they're all situated at different points along the rod, okay? So we need to try to take that into account. So what we do is we introduce something called the inertia per unit length. Okay, this is specifically for a, 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 uniform, a uniform one dimensional object. Okay, so what is this telling us? This is saying for every change in dx. Okay, so if you can imagine a single rod along the x axis and you can imagine a differential length dx, for every length dx, we have a, a dm. So the mass or the inertia, there's a certain inertia per dx. Okay? And um, so what we do is, let's see if I can get my tablet going again. So we know that our uh, rotational inertia is r squared dm and if this value lambda which is dm dx that's what we have there so if we dm then is lambda dx so if we take this and we plug we plug this into there we're going to get r squared lambda dx which is we and this is um, what, what you notice, what they say here is that this is uniform, uniform. Now that's important because if it's uniform, then this lambda is a constant and we can take it out of the integral, okay? But actually, in, so what does that mean if it says lambda is a constant? It means that if you've got a rod like that and you're and you're looking at these dm's, there's your dm, um, and you're, you're looking at from, from x equals zero all the way to x equals x, or whatever the length is. As you're moving from left to right, and you're adding up all these, um, these little inertial segments, then what, what lambda being a constant or unif uniform, means that the inertia is evenly distributed right across the rod. Okay, I hope this is not too confusing. Okay, but there are cases where it's not uniform, where lambda is actually a function of position, which means that the inertia or the mass changes as you move from left to right. Okay, it might start high and decrease, or it might start low and increase, which means more mass is situated here. But if lambda is a constant, then that means that your mass is evenly distributed. It's uniform. All right. So now the point is, now we've got it in a form where, where we um, are looking at how it changes as you move along the x-axis. Okay? So that's what we have there. And similarly, we can do this for inertia per unit area. We can say dm divided by dA. 
and then we substitute this in. So basically what we're doing is we are looking at the rotational inertia as a function now of position, as a function of uh, your, your area, and as a function of volume. Okay, so this rho is dm divided by dv. Okay, alright, see you in the, I'll, we'll do this example in the next one.